today we're going to talk a lot about Nordic tacos and Freya Dogs Taco. And uh, the schedule we've got tonight, we're going to, today, we're going to start with our cake uh, because that needs to go into the oven ASAP. And then we're going to move on to our taco meats. We're going to do a shrimp salad. We're going to do a ground meat. And then we're also going to do a uh, uh, cauliflower, or I'll actually show you the cauliflower I made earlier. Then we'll frost our cake uh, and we'll assemble our tacos. It's going to be fast and fun. And like Greg said, if you've got any questions or comments along the way, throw those into chat and uh, we'll address them as they come up. So the first thing we're going to start with is our Icelandic skusikaka. And I for, forgive me, I don't speak Icelandic. So maybe I said that with a little bit of a Swedish accent. Uh, this cake is a really nice cake because it's pretty easy, and it also shows us how to uh, make a cake from scratch. So we're not using a box today. We're actually making it from scratch. And one of the very first things we're going to do is we're going to beat or cream our sugar, our eggs, and our vanilla. And it's really important that we beat them uh, while they're at room temperature, so that we can incorporate as much uh, air into our cake as possible. And that gives us a really nice fluffy cake. So I'm going to start by, I've got my sugar in here, and I'm going to use a stand-up mixer, but you could absolutely use a hand mixer for this. I'm adding my eggs, and I'm putting these, I'm cracking these into a dish so that I don't get any shell in there. And again, my eggs are at room temperature. All of my cake ingredients are at room temperature. And I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla. Now, typically, I don't even measure vanilla. I just sort of eyeball it because I think it's, if you go a little bit overboard, it's okay. It doesn't ruin your finished product because it tastes so good. And this recipe actually calls for coffee. But I know some of you might not like coffee or might not have it. So if you're not using coffee in this cake, it's absolutely fine to use water. Or you could go really off the board and use some sort of a juice. That might be kind of fun. So I'm just going to let this whip for a couple of minutes. And while that's doing its thing, I've got all my other ingredients measured out. So these are my dry ingredients. It's got some flour in here, some baking powder, and some cocoa. And I like to put a pinch of salt in there as well. I don't know if that's on your recipe or not. Salt is nice and sweet things because it's sort of it's almost like a, a way to balance the flavor, but also if there's a little bit of salt in your sweet dish, it brings out the sweetness, like a counterbalance. All right. So that's all mixed up. I don't know. You can probably see my in my mixer here, the creamed sugar and egg is already kind of changing color and changing consistency. It's getting fluffy. And we like that. We like a fluffy, airy mix. And when I'm Using a stand-up mixer, the beating goes a lot faster just because of the, the volume of the mixer. Gives us lots of good air. I've already got my milk measured. Um, I'm going to measure my coffee. I believe we need a third cup. And I'm using, because I only have one liquid measuring cup, I've going to use a solid measuring cup. There is a slight variation in the volume uh, when we use a liquid measuring cup versus a, a solid measuring cup, but it's not going to affect our cake today. So we're just going to wing it. A wing and a prayer, as they say. All right. So that's actually whipped up really nice, pretty fast. You can see that. It's really changed texture. And I can see that all of my sugar is incorporated. So it should be good to go. I'm going to add my milk that I pre-measured. And your recipe calls for regular milk. 
you could absolutely use coconut milk. Um, I'm actually using buttermilk uh, because I didn't have any regular milk. And now I'm going to add my butter. Again, my butter is room temperature. I'm just kind of cutting it into smaller pieces. So that it incorporates a little bit faster and better. We don't want any funny lumps, at least not in our cake. I first started hearing about Swedish and Norwegian people celebrating taco night years ago. It was back, gosh, probably in the early 2000s because I followed this really cool Swedish blogger. Uh, she still blogs a little bit. Her name is Anne, and her blog is called Anne's Blog or Anne's Food. Uh, dot blogspot dot com, and I learned so much from following her. That's when blogs. I'm, I'm adding my melted chocolate now. Uh, that's when blogs first started really becoming popular, especially food blogs. And so I learned a lot from following Anne's blog. She's super cool, and she always would talk about when she'd visit. Oh, now I'm going to add my coffee. I believe I need a third cup. Yep, a third cup of coffee. Uh, quick question in the chat. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. recipe says melted butter. Does it matter? Oh, I did not write that down. It does matter, uh, but it's not going to matter in this cake because my coffee was warm. So it's okay. Let's just wing it. If you come to any of my classes, you'll soon see that I wing it a lot. But everything always turns out. It's amazing. That's the thing about the kitchen, being in the kitchen. Never panic, because everything's fixable. All right. So that is mixing up really well. And yeah, my butter's totally dissipating. It's all good. So anyway, Anne would talk about when she'd come to America to visit or when folks came to visit her in Sweden from America, she'd always ask them, I'm adding my dry ingredients and I'm going to sort of mix those in slowly. She would ask them to bring her taco seasoning and salsa because she couldn't get it in Swedish grocery stores. So as I researched tacos and the history of tacos, in Scandinavian stores, I learned that back in the 70s and early 80s, some companies like Old El Paso, which uh, if you're in America, you, you've probably heard of that brand of taco seasoning, uh, tried to get their products to become popular in Norway and Sweden, but it just didn't take. The marketing campaign didn't work for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't understand the culture. Uh, Folks just weren't into tacos like we were here or in, into any Tex-Mex food like we were here in America. So then in the 90s, another company came in and started advertising big time and having something called Taco Friday, or Fria does taco. And that is when the folks in Norway and Sweden got really into tacos and started eating tacos on Friday night. And now when you go to a grocery store in Sweden or uh, Norway, you'll see an entire aisle, like an entire aisle in the grocery store will be devoted to tacos and taco ingredients. And when I was there, in, I was in Sweden in 2017, and I was at a grocery store and saw this huge aisle of just taco ingredients. And in, a Swed in Swedish, there was a little advertising sign. I'm adding my yogurt now that said, uh, <laughs> Friday's not just for tacos anymore, or tacos not just for Friday anymore. They were trying to make sure that people understood they didn't need to just eat tacos on Friday, that it was something they could eat any day of the week. And some of the differences 
in Swedish and Norwegian tacos and even Danish tacos uh, that are different than the tacos we have in America. If you were looking at all on your uh, recipe sheet and the different ingredients we're using today, things like shrimp, pineapple, corn is a really, really big deal. Uh, those are the ingredients that you'll see that are a little bit different than what we see here in America. Hey, Patrice, and, uh, yeah. we have uh, a question in the chat. Uh, in the directions, it mentions cinnamon, uh, but they're not sure how much cinnamon that they should use. Um, I would use a teaspoon. I'm not a big cinnamon person, so that's why I didn't add it to mine. So uh, thank you for clarifying the recipe. Um, in this cake pan, I have buttered it pretty generously. And then I've got some cocoa powder here. So those of you who have baked in the past, uh, sometimes you'll see a recipe will say grease the pan and then sift a little bit of flour in the pan. And that helps the cake release once it's baked. But since this is a chocolate cake, if I put flour in my pan, I would have white residue on my cake and it wouldn't be so pretty. So I like to use cocoa powder, and that way it's the same color as my cake, and it'll be pretty. So I'm just going to kind of pat the cocoa powder all around. All right, and empty the extra. And I'm going to get my batter into the cake pan and get that in the oven so we can move on to our tacos. I know if any of you are familiar with something called the Nordic cookbook, it's written by, a, well, it's written by a lot of authors because it's a collection of, of recipes from the entire Nordic region and kind of the history of those recipes. The guy who got that cookbook together is a chef by the name of Magnus Nielsen, and he talks a lot about uh, how Taco Friday is absolutely important to the culture there and how each family will use whatever meat that they have available. So if you're up in northern Sweden or northern Norway, maybe you've got reindeer in your freezer. So that's what you're going to put your, in your taco meat. If you're on the coast, you might have shrimp or cod or even salmon. So you'll put that in your taco. So it's really, in that way, it's not really that much different than in America because we like to use what we have. In fact, uh, before our class started, I was telling Greg, I forgot to get chocolate for the cake to melt. So I used some of my husband's chocolate candy bars. <laughs> I said, he doesn't get candy bars, but he does get cake. Uh, and so, Teresa, you have two questions that have popped. Yeah. One is actually asking if you have any preference on the kind of cocoa powder that you use. Ah, yes, actually I do. Um, I like to use... Uh, Ghirardelli, or Ghirardelli, uh, I think it's really nice. It's a, a higher quality chocolate. But if you don't have that in your store, just get the Hershey's processed cocoa. I think it's if it's Dutch processed, uh, that's the preferred kind of cocoa for baking. And, of course, it needs to be unsweetened in this recipe, in most recipes. And then our second question is, uh, they had noticed that you are using a nine by nine cooking uh, baking sheet, but if they they were wondering if you could use a, a sheet pan like when making a Texas sheet cake, if oh. that's uh, you know you could. It's going to change the baking time. Uh, it's going to bake a lot quicker, so you'll just want to watch it and make sure you don't overcook it. Chocolate cake is one of those things I'd rather underbake it than overbake it, if that makes sense. I'd rather have it gooey. There's a cake that's very popular in the Nordic countries, and it is called uh, it's called a gooey cake or sticky cake, a clodkaka, 
and it's almost like an underbaked brownie and it's really delicious, really popular. And, uh, Again, because you don't overcook the chocolate, it still carries that super gooey, yummy taste. All righty. So while our cake is baking, let's talk a little bit about the cauliflower. Um, I, because this, the cauliflower cooks at a higher temperature, 425, and my cake's at 350, I actually made it ahead of time. And I wanted to admit to you all that I have never been a fan of cauliflower. I think because I always had it, I, I mean, I like it raw, dipped in ranch dressing. That's great. But I always had it maybe overcooked, so it got kind of that uh, kind of cabbagey, overcooked cabbagey flavor. But then I started seeing pretty different colors of cauliflower at my farmer's market. Purple cauliflower and gold cauliflower, green cauliflower. And I started... Uh, roasting the cauliflower and something about these beautiful colors almost uh, makes the cauliflower sweeter to me. And so whenever I get a chance to uh, use a pretty colored cauliflower, I do. And toasting it, roasting it, gives it, again, it kind of caramelizes it and gives it a really nice sweetness. So what I did for this taco cauliflower is I broke these larger florets into smaller pieces. You can use a knife too. And then I toss those pieces in a little bit of oil, vegetable or olive oil is fine. And then I put a little bit of my taco seasoning on that. And then I roasted them till they were tender, until they caramelized. And they are delicious. I'm very happy with those. Uh, cauliflower tacos are really good. Uh, especially if you like to top them maybe with a nut. Today we're using peanuts, but you could also use a sunflower seed or any kind of toasted nut. Something about the nutty flavor of the cauliflower and the toasting of the nut together is just a great combination in a taco or even just as a side dish. Now our next kind of interesting uh, <laughs> taco ingredient is shrimp salad. Shrimp salad is huge in Norway for tacos. A uh, shrimp salad is huge all over the Nordic region, but in tacos, I think it's really interesting. The Swedes like to put shrimp salad on their hot dogs, uh, which is also kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> but shrimp salad. <laughs> in a taco is really, I, I think, clever. Again, using what you have, right? And using what you like. And shrimp's really good for you, too. So what we're going to do today is make a kind of a shrimp salad, but we're going to taco fry it. And in Norway, when you get shrimp, it's pretty little. It's about a quarter of this size. This is gulf shrimp, which is a really big species. And so since the shrimp is so big, I'm actually cut it down to size. And this isn't a full 12 ounces. Uh, this is uh, more like six ounces because there's only two of us in this house. And so I'm just going to make enough for the two of us. So I'm just kind of cutting it into a smaller shrimp size. And this is already cooked, already cleaned. Put the shell off after cooking it. Make sure this is clean, no veins. All right, I'm actually going to put it in this dish. And then in here, I'm going to find a lime and a zester would be very good. And I'm going to, can you guys see that okay? Uh, I think a little more. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, we'll just move this over here. Y'all don't need to see that. So I'm going to zest my lime. And again, this is one of those recipes where I've given you a, a baseline, but then you should do you. You should, if you don't want lime, you could use lemon. You could even use orange juice. And I like using the zest because that's where all the good flavor and the oils are. And in a pinch, you could even use vinegar as your acid. And just remember, with an acid... Usually you're going to need a little bit of salt. So we'll taste it 
in the end to make sure we have enough good seasoning. And I usually add the salt at the end because I don't want to over salt, just like I don't want to over bake. And then I'm going to add a little bit of mayonnaise. And this is actually Japanese mayonnaise. This is Kewpie. It's got a little more of an umami flavor to it. And umami just means uh, kind of savory, salty. So like if you know what soy sauce tastes like, that's an umami flavor. All righty. So I'll mix those two up. I like Cupy mayonnaise because it, it does have a really nice flavor, but when I was a little girl, my older sister had dolls that, that, that looked, the doll is, I don't know which came first, the doll or the mayonnaise, but she collected Cupy dolls. And it, if you can see, see the doll, that's what her Cupy dolls look like. So there are these little naked babies with a curly top on their head. Now this is cilantro. Cilantro, um, gosh, I think about a third of the population tastes cilantro and thinks that it tastes like soap. So if that happens to you, actually another one of my sisters has that where she cannot eat cilantro because it tastes like soap to her. And it's just sort of a genetic thing. So if you have that or somebody in your life has that, you can use parsley. You could even use dill or chives. Use any herb that you like or that's available to you. You could use the top of a celery leaf. You know how those celery grows straight up, but then it has the little leaves on top? That would actually be really nice in this. Just as a heads up, Patrice, uh, the onion cutting is a little bit off screen. All right. Now, I'm hoping some of you took Christy's cutting class yesterday. Greg was telling me he learned a lot, too. I think the most important thing to think about when you're cutting onions, or anything really, is to have a flat surface. Because if you have a flat surface, you can control the item you are slicing. I just kind of follow the line of the onion. Can you see that okay, Greg? Yes. The camera? Okay. Thank you. And I'm just going to dice this. And dicing means pretty small cut. So my shrimp is chopped, but my onion is diced. And my, and my, and my cilantro is minced. You could use any onion in this that you want. I know a lot of times in recipes it specifies red or green or white or yellow or leeks. But you should always remember our shallots. You can really substitute any onion in any recipe. If you don't have the onion that's in the recipe, find one you do have. It should never be limited because of what we have. I'm going to put that in there. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. Um, I've given you the measurement. Okay. But once you've made this a couple times, you'll realize that it's the flavor you like that it should taste like. Yes, I'm going to get a little spoon here and taste, see what it's like before I add my shrimp. Mm-hmm. And it does need a little bit of salt. I'll put just a little bit of salt in there. Shrimp is so sweet, so it stands up well to a little bit of spice. And I'm going to put just a squeeze of pepper in there. All righty. And then I'm going to add my shrimp. And that's all there is to that. Now, you'll hear me talk a lot about Nordic versus Scandinavian. And a lot of people think that those two words are interchangeable. 
but they're actually not. When I talk about Scandinavia, I'm talking about a culture and a language. And the three Scandinavian countries that speak pretty much the same language, they can understand one another, uh, and have very similar cultures are Denmark, I'm going to chill this, Sweden, and Norway. And when I talk about the Nordic countries, I'm referring to a region. And the region includes those three Scandinavian countries, as well as Finland and Iceland and the island. And that's pretty cool. All right, so now we have moved on to our ground meat. And you could also use leftovers. Again, that is really common in uh, Scandinavia to use leftover meat. So maybe you got a rotisserie chicken and you had that for dinner last night and you still have a couple cups of rotisserie chicken left that you've chopped up. You could use that uh, in your taco. Uh, maybe you have meatloaf. You could absolutely use meatloaf in your taco. Uh, anything you have that's a leftover protein can go in this recipe. Uh, you could even use uh, beans, refried beans, or a taco ingredient we're really familiar with in America. Not so common in our Scandinavian countries. But they do love a good legume. All right, so I'm actually using ground turkey today. And because it's so lean, um, I've added a little bit of oil to the bottom of my pan. And I'm just going to let that cook up. And I gave you some uh, instructions for uh, making your own taco mix. But uh, <laughs> in America, as in Scandinavia, using a taco, pre-made taco mix is pretty common. Uh, it's so easy to do to just grab the taco mix and add it to your protein. So that's what I'm doing today. Actually, have, Trader Joe's has a really good taco mix, and it's only 99 cents. So this is really good. They also have really good tortillas. I think, um, and I'm adding mine right now, but you can wait if you want to. I like to add it while I'm toasting uh, because it gives a uh, – gives the spices kind of a chance to toast as well. So it kind of, it makes their flavor come out a little bit more. It like re-releases the oils in those spices. And then once that browns, now if you're using leftovers, you may want to add a little bit of onion. You can absolutely add onion now and uh, round that. I've done that many times where I add onion, maybe even some other vegetables, some carrots, uh, some peppers, just to kind of enhance the flavor and add some vegetables into our diet. Kind of, It's not really hiding it. I think it enhances the flavor. If you've ever made marinara sauce um, and you start from scratch, you, you add onion, you might add peppers and celery and carrots, and it enhances the flavor of the sauce. And the same is true for tacos. All righty. So while, checking on my cake here. Oh, cake's looking pretty good. While that's doing its thing, um, let's talk about some other ingredients. Um, for topping our tacos, I love using cabbage. I like to slice cabbage really thin, especially if I'm putting it on a fish taco. I think it just it gives it such a good crunch. Today I had spinach, so I'm going to use spinach with my tacos. And then I have a salsa. I like to make my own salsa, especially in the summer when the garden is giving us so much great produce. Uh, it's winter right now, so I actually... I uh, bought one of my favorite local salsas in Minnesota, Salsa Lisa, and I got one that's got pineapple in it because I thought, well, that's perfect. Pineapple salsa because we're adding pineapple to our tacos. And here's that pineapple. Pineapple and bananas are an interesting ingredient in our Scandinavian uh, friends diet. They love, especially the Swedes, love adding uh, bananas to everything, savory dishes, pizzas, hot dishes, and uh, 
both the Norwegians and the Swedes love adding pineapple as well. I think when we talk about kind of the influence of culture, we understand that as folks started traveling to other countries and other lands, they started eating the foods of those countries and lands and realizing how delicious it is, delicious it is, and then bringing it back, just like tacos, bringing the tacos back to their country and uh, eating them there. Now, Swedes and Norwegians and Danes, uh, their cheeses are a little bit different than the cheeses we have in America. In America, it's pretty standard to have uh, a cheddar or a Monterey Jack. Maybe we've got some queso from Mexico. Uh, more common in our Scandinavian uh, tacos would be like a feta or a farmer's cheese, something with a little bit of sour bite. Uh, and also, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, in your uh, travels to Norway, are pinto beans canned or canned pinto beans or refried beans commonly available or are they pretty hard to come by in Norway? That is a really great question, and I don't have the answer to it. Um, I, I wasn't ever looking for those items, so I don't know. I mean, obviously, beans are part of. Uh, everyone's culture, uh, Swedish brown beans. Um, I, I feel like there must be, but I don't know. I have, have, that'd be a good Google search if somebody wants to look on Google for us. That's a really great question. Okay, so uh, we also use a lot of sour cream in our tacos. Yogurt is far more common uh, over in Scandinavia, so we're going to have yogurt in our tacos today. Peanuts also, again, <laughs> peanuts are, you know, a food that are very common in America. Peanut butter, would you give somebody not from America peanut butter? They often wonder why we're eating it because they don't get it. But peanuts have become really popular uh, as a condiment. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. And if you wanted to at this point, you could absolutely add uh, some tomato sauce. Again, we're adding things that make it healthier, which tomato sauce would do. And speaking of which, I've also got some tomatoes for my condiment and some jalapeno peppers. And then radishes, I think, are one of the most underrated food groups. And I wanted to show you... A they, they come in all sorts of sizes and colors. There's so many varieties. Um, and these are just some regular radishes, but you can see even regular old radishes can come in some really pretty different colors. So I'm going to slice those thin and add those as well. And when you're talking about different jalapeno peppers, uh, they come in a variety of sizes, colors, and heat. So if you like a hot pepper, try to find one that's super spicy. If you don't like a hot pepper, you can always find a milder pepper. You could even use a bell pepper. Bell peppers are huge in tacos in Norway. They love them. You could use any color or variety that you want. I'm just slicing my radish super thin. And the colors are so pretty. But you know what? Let's do this one like this. Again, I'm, I need a flat surface to control my wicked little, wicked little radish here. And again, in the summer, you can grow your own. Grow your own radishes, grow your own peppers, grow your own cauliflower. Olives, another really popular item to put on your taco in Scandinavia. And of course, we've got cilantro or parsley. And here is the aforementioned bell pepper. Very common, very popular ingredients. You 
cucumber is also a really popular ingredient to put into your taco. I don't know that I ever saw a cucumber in a taco in America unless it was, you know, a taco salad. My mom would always make taco salad with Doritos and lettuce and then every kind of vegetable she had in the garden. Cucumbers, peppers, carrots, etc. And if you want an avocado, this is what they look like. Now, my avocado is not quite ready to be cut into, so I'll have that tomorrow. You have to make sure they're nice and Nice and soft. And this is a blood orange. See how pretty that is? So it's called a blood orange because obviously it's kind of a pretty bloody color, but it's got a really nice little uh, taste to it. And they're in season right now, just, just about ready to go out of season. I think that's a really nice addition to your taco plate. And then I've also got a lime. And if you want to add some lime or blood orange juice to your meat as it's cooking, I think that would be just awesome. So why don't we do that? That'll give it a, even more flavor. I love citrus. There. Waste not, want not. All righty. I think that's everybody. Now, I also pulled a couple of items from my pantry, just because I think it's kind of fun to share. So these are some tomatoes and peppers that we grew in our garden last summer that I dehydrated. So I'm going to add those. And these are some green tomatoes that we dehydrated. So I'm going to add those to my little taco area here as well. And I think our meat is just about done. I'm going to give that a taste. And then we can talk about our frosting. That is perfect. All right. Oh, there we go. That is perfect. All right. <laughs> I'll just let that sit for a moment. Um, let's talk about another difference uh, between tacos in Minnesota, or I'm sorry, in, in America, and tacos in Scandinavia is the vessel we put the taco on. So in America, we're pretty used to tortillas, soft tortillas, or like these crunchy tacos, those are always my favorite. So those are really common in America. In Scandinavia, it's far more common to have a flatbread. So uh, maybe you've got a lefse or a tunbrud in Sweden. Uh, this actually is a soft bread I made this morning. All this is is two ingredients. It's yogurt and self-rising flour. Uh, really easy. If anyone's interested, we can send that recipe out to you uh, with the class wrap-up. Uh, really easy to pull together. And, I mean, if I can make something look round and good, it's pretty easy. And then after I formed the dough, I rolled it into balls and rolled the balls out and cooked them on a flat top. And that was it. Super easy, super tasty. Now we have to figure out... Oh, and chips, of course. <laughs> now we just have to figure out how we're going to make room for our frosting. This over here. So if anyone's cooking along, I'm very curious to know uh, what, what kind of meat or protein you're using. If you've tried any of the recipes yet, you're going to make tacos tonight. 
just as a heads up, Patrice, uh, yeah. people are very enthusiastic of sending, getting the bread recipe. So, oh, good. Okay. All right. Whenever you're ready, and uh, the recording of the class usually takes about a week for it to get ready to go on YouTube. So, whenever you're ready, you can send it my way, and I can add it to the uh, YouTube link. Email awesome. That's sent out to everybody. Okay. And it, like I said, it's so easy. You don't even need to watch someone make it. It's really easy. All right. All right. Someone did let us know that they went with the shrimp salad. All right. Did they taste it yet? Have they made their taco with it? I I, I will let you know. Oh, someone else <laughs> uh, is using their ground meat. So we've got the whole. Nice. We got quite a little, quite a variety going. Great. Okay, I'm going to melt my butter, and I've already got my powdered sugar. It looks like my ingredients had a baby. There's so many of them here. Okay, so I've got. Can you guys see that? Okay, I can move this over. going to get overstimulated with all this stuff on the table. So I've already got my powdered sugar measured. It's a one and two third cup powdered sugar. I'm going to add one half cup of melted butter. I've got a tablespoon of cocoa in there. And we're going to add four tablespoons of coffee and two teaspoons of vanilla. So here's my vanilla. I've got my coffee. All right. Someone uh, is using a black bean veggie burger. So they're... Ooh, nice. So like a crumble or the burgers themselves? Well, I mean, they're going to have to chat chat into again for you to with the follow-up <laughs> questions. I love that. Ooh, what can you substitute the coffee with if someone doesn't okay. like coffee? Yeah. Okay, there's lots of ways you could substitute that coffee. Since this has got coconut in it already, or we're going to top this cake with coconut, you could absolutely do a coconut milk, like a canned coconut, because it's nice and fatty. Or you could do a juice. Again, um, think about the flavor. What flavors do you like that go with chocolate? A lot of people like orange and chocolate. Um, a lot of people like cinnamon and chocolate. So you could sort of go that direction. You could also use water or regular milk, or uh, buttermilk would be fine, too. Uh, as a follow-up, the uh, black bean veggies are actually made from scratch. They're from Mark Bittman's McBitty's Bean Burgers recipe. Yes! Oh, I love Mark Bittman is the best. I actually got to meet him. I'm going to name drop. I got to meet him back in the 90s when food was just taking off. Uh, the food was becoming super popular. The food channel had just started. And uh, we were all watching these food channels and watching people make food on TV. And my cake is ready to come out. Oh, no, nope, no. Nope, she's a little wiggly. She's still got a couple minutes. Um, and there was this woman in town, her name is Suze Ellickson, uh, here in Twin Cities, and she started something called the Cookbook Club, and she would bring in uh, chefs and bakers and cookbook writers and restaurant owners and food writers from all over the country, and they would come to Harmar Mall in Roseville, Minnesota, and talk to us about uh, their projects and what was going on in the food world, and it was so exciting. And Mark Bittman, I believe he was working uh, with the magazine Savoir at the time. Uh, somebody can Google that to keep me honest. <laughs> he came in and oh, he was so awesome. He was so smart and so enthusiastic about food. And I learned so much just from, you know, being in the audience that day. It was really, really a cool experience. And his recipes are so fun and so they always work. I just think that he is neat and he's got such a rich history. Uh, he knows so much about the history of different foods and he's just cool. He's a cool dude. Uh, they wanted to let you know that that was a cool story and that was a very impressive name drop. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, we could name drop all day, right? <laughs> all right. So I'm going to let my melted butter cool off a little bit and uh let's see here 
my cake is still in the oven. I'm assuming if you all make cake today, yours is as well. But we can assemble our taco ingredients nonetheless. And I think if anybody has, I love this pan so much, but it's always so, I always need my husband to like hold the other side of it when I try to take things out of it. <laughs> so if anybody has questions or comments right now, is a really good time to chime in. Mark Bittman wrote that, the vegan, five-day vegan book too. Maybe that was where the recipe came from um, that our classmate mentioned. That is a great book, um, especially if you want to start eating more plant-based foods like cauliflower. All righty. So here's... Oh, there's a suggestion of another Bitman book, How to Eat oh. Anything Vegetarian. Yes, yes. See, he's so cool because he understands that we like, we enjoy the flavor of meat, but we also want to eat sustainably and make sure our planet stays intact. Uh, which is, you know, speaking of, of that, when we talk about, again, Nordic food, um <sighs> Last 15 years ago or so, uh, the whole new Nordic trend started, uh, which I'm assuming if you're here uh, within this class, you may know a little bit about what that is. And that was when about a dozen chefs, Nordic chefs, got together and uh, decided they wanted to really uh, emphasize and uh, explore the ingredients and techniques that have always been part of the Nordic region and really uh, make put, put kind of a stamp on the map, a place on the map, quite literally, <laughs> the Nordic map, uh, <laughs> saying, you know, this is what we, this is our philosophy of food. So uh, one of the most important uh, aspects of that is using seasonal ingredients, using ingredients that um, are humanely uh, resourced. So uh, if you're, you're eating meat or seafood or vegetables, you're harvesting those in a way that is humane and that gives, doesn't take away from the planet, but it gives back to the planet. So not over harvesting, um, making sure that uh, you treat uh, planting animals and the earth in a way uh, that is gentle and kind. And uh, also, I was so interested in the whole philosophy of New Nordic. And then when I visited, um, that is, it made me understand that that is more of a restaurant idea where the everyday home cook in the Nordic country are just like here where we're just trying to get a good meal on the table for our family. Um, we can't always afford organic ingredients. We do the best we can with what we have. And uh, I think that is something we all have in common, but just the idea of understanding uh, what seasonal, sustainable, uh, humanely resourced foods are, I think it's something that is really important for us to be aware of. Even if we can't always do it in our everyday life, at least do our best in, in finding those ingredients that we can source, uh, you know, can afford to source in a sustainable manner. With all of these taco ingredients, is there any specific way uh, we should be layering them or is it whatever we would like? That is the beauty of taco night. You do you, whatever you like to do. Now, I've always been, oh, I added my melted butter to my frosting. I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to pour that over my cake when it finally comes out of the oven. And then I'm going to um, add some shredded coconut to it. Now, this is unsweetened. I like unsweetened because I don't like a lot of sugar. Um, you can use uh, regular sweetened coconut, absolutely. If you have unsweetened, you can make this into sweetened coconut uh, by uh, making a, a simple syrup, which is one part water, one part sugar, and then uh, adding, you, you simmer that until all the sugar dissolves, and then you could add that to your unsweetened coconut and sort of lay it flat 
let it absorb the sweetness for like a half an hour. And uh, then you would have sweetened coconut. But anyway, I like the plain. Okay. So in my world, when I make tacos, let me grab a plate here. My friend Don made this. Isn't that pretty? I would start with a nice, warm, soft bread. And I would actually add cheese first because I like it to melt. And then I would add some of my warm ingredients. We'll add, we'll make this one our vegetarian. So we'll add some of our cauliflower. I need my, I need my chopsticks. Okay. And you absolutely have to have corn because this is a Nordic taco and you must add corn. And, oh, I should have mentioned earlier, we don't heat the corn. If it's frozen corn, we thaw it. If it is uh, canned corn, we just drain it and we just use it cold or room temp. It's kind of weird, but that's the way it is. I'm adding a little bit of pineapple and I love pineapple and olives and hot pepper. That's my favorite ingredient to put on a pizza. So I'm going to do that in my taco. Let's see to that. I'm going to add a little bit of red pepper just for the color. And then I could absolutely add some peanuts. And a little bit of yogurt, maybe a little bit of salsa, and that's it. That's a lot of stuff on one taco, which is why I make smaller uh, smaller tacos so that I could have more than one. And that would be, to me, a perfect taco, a little bit of cilantro. And a friend of mine gave me a really good tip for tacos. He puts a soft taco shell or tortillas or, you know, here I've got a flatbread on the bottom of his plate. And he puts a bunch of greens on top of that. So maybe the spinach. And then he takes a crunchy taco and fills that with all the stuff he wants. And as he's eating it, all the stuff falls out of the taco onto the soft taco. And then he's got his second taco. I think that's brilliant. That is brilliant taco eating. I'm actually going to add a little bit of crunch to this, too. And that's a perfect taco. All right. I'm going to check my cake one more time since we've got about three minutes left in class. I'm going to actually check this with a skewer and see how far she has to go. Oh, she's on. Yay. Okay. Let's make some room for our pretty little cake friend. If you, um, would you have a moment since we've been talking about new Nordic tacos and, uh, yeah. we've had quite a lot of, uh, pizza, new Nordic pizza classes. In yeah. The One of our, uh, students needs to know, since you're showing us your favorite of the Nordic tacos, what is your favorite of the Nordic pizzas? <laughs> uh, I love banan curry. So that is a pizza. This is still warm. Normally you would cool the cake, but, you know, we're pressed for time. This is almost like a ganache now. It's going to be actually really good like this. Uh, so you take a pizza and you put on your, uh, you, you, you take your pizza crust and you add to it some regular red sauce. And to that sauce, a little bit of curry powder and a little bit of a garam masala, which is like an Indian curry. And then you top that with bananas, sliced bananas, so it looks like a banana pepperoni. And to that, uh, you add your cheese and you bake that and it's so delicious. And when it comes out, uh, this is where I'm a little bit different than our Swedish friends. I like to add, um, well, peanuts, uh, is pretty common, and then lots and lots of fresh herbs like uh, Thai basil and cilantro and mint. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty and it's so delicious. Uh, 
But now I've got a new favorite pizza that actually I will be teaching this summer. Um, and it's one where you take, uh, you actually use a white sauce on your pizza and add caviar to it and then bake it. Um, and you can add really anything to that you want, uh, like vegetables. And you bake that. And the caviar and the white sauce makes the most amazing sauce for your pizza. I'm adding a little bit of coconut to the top here. Do, I want to know what your all favorite pizzas are. Favorite Nordic pizzas. Uh, before I get to answering that question, um, for the shrimp salad taco, do you yeah. add toppings or is it just the shrimp salad? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Add toppings. Should we make one of those too? <laughs> With a shrimp taco, I might use my feta instead of uh, my instead of my uh, cheddar. So for a shrimp taco, let's see. So I would put some feta down. I haven't opened it. And then I would, I'll put a little bit of sour cream in there. And my shrimp. And let's see. Oh, absolutely. We need some corn in there. And you know what? We're going to do some peppers, too, because everything, everything on this table would be delicious with your shrimp. So don't be afraid to get out there and experiment, even the peanuts and the olives. And a little bit of salsa, some radish. That'll be good. And maybe a tomato. How's that? So whatever you like is what you, how you should top it. It's that simple. Maybe a little bit of lime on the side there. And dripping. So be creative. And then when you're all done with your tacos, you can actually make a really good salad out of all of these ingredients. 